Hello. Welcome to Monday Mask Day. Today, I'm going to do a face mask. I'm going to do this in honor of Halloween. I'm going to do this juice up pumpkin mask. It says a pumpkin juice a day keeps trouble away. But it says don't drink. In other words, for you dummies, don't drink. So this is from Lab for You. And what's it say? Get past all of the uh, foreign languages. It's, it's all in like Korean or something like that. So where's it made? That will tell us. I can't even. Oh yeah, here's a made in Korea. So that's all in Korean. And then you finally get down here. <laughs> okay. It says pumpkin is full of natural acid and enzymes to encourage skin cell turnover, leaving you with youthful, radiant skin. Tensile skin sheet will fit perfectly to skin, helping deeper penetration of essence of maximum for maximum effect. After cleansing, which I just did, use a toner, which I don't use. Take the mask from the package and spread evenly over the entire face, avoiding the eye and lip area. Remove the sheet after 15 or 20 minutes and gently pat to allow remaining formula to absorb in the skin. And it's got all kinds of, you know, ingredients. So let's get busy here. Um, first, well, I may need it though to <laughs> see how to unfold. May need the glasses to see how to unfold this crazy thing. <sighs> Well, I should be, well, I'll mention that after I start talking. I mean, when we're sitting here waiting. It's pretty wet, pretty wet. Oh, it's drippy wet. I got my new face, face hand cloth towel. First, let me, uh, the hair back. I may have to put the glasses back on, but okay. So in honor of Halloween, here's my old bat ears. Or what are they? Well, I guess ears and... <laughs> Oh, oh, wait, there's the bat wings. <laughs> oh, gosh. So let's see if I can get it open without spilling too much liquid on me. I don't mean on my face. I mean everywhere else here. Let's see. Let's see. You know who these fast... These masks remind me of when we all have them on. My hands are all wet. Take these off. Oh, cold. Just, oh. Wait a minute. The nose part, let me come down. Is it on the inside, of course? Okay. Okay, now tell me, this doesn't remind you of Jason from the Halloween movies. <laughs> That's kind of a little my eye. <sighs> Here we go. Get my lips through. Okay, put that there. Dry my hands off again and use my little, little roller. Oh, and I should look at the time, okay. And I notice so many people now are using these rollers. <laughs> now that Kimmy from Kimmy's Boxes started it, we're all taking it on. We all belong to the same Monday mask group, a bunch of us. He's from what the Halloween movies is it? I don't remember. <laughs> oh, put that there. Maybe I'll help hold it down better. Just on to me to look and see. Well, let's see. It is recording. <laughs> yeah, I'm doing this blindly because I can't see without glasses on. I just I'm looking the general direction and kind of see, but not clearly. And then when I put the glasses on, we, I can see clearly now. The mask is gone. All right. Stop 
about that for a while. What to talk about during the 20 minutes. Well, today I have on his shirt that, I don't know if you guys remember from, it was the Trunk Club box. And when I tried this stuff on, I tried this one on, showed Bob, you know, aka Peanut Gallery. We both liked it. And I walked back in the bedroom where I had the camera all set up. I took the camera down, went back out here, you know, changed my shirt, went back out here. I thought, I forgot to record it. <laughs> so this is it. Now you can see it. See, it's just kind of, a, you know, what you thinking, Luz? <laughs> Lucy's sitting down here. You want Mama to do one of these on your face? <laughs> I could probably put a, one of those iPads on her face and cover her whole little face. Ooh. Once they're on, they're fine. Just, you know, uncomfortable to talk and move around. I have to keep mm, the thinker. <laughs> well, what should I talk about? Maybe I'll tell you about my children. Good subject. I had my first baby when I was 19, just about 20. And it was a boy named Phil. And he just turned 51 in September. <laughs> That's freaky when they start hitting 50. Anyway, Phil played ice hockey and other sports all the time they were growing up. And uh, was very good at, at them. Went to college. And as soon as he was done with the college here in Washington State, he moved to Boston. Then from there, he moved to New York because he wanted to experience, he thought he had to experience the madness. <laughs> He's still there. <laughs> it's been how many years? <laughs> so <laughs> He's not ever coming back and doesn't hear. So anyway, Phil got married when he was about, you know, he lived the carefree life of a bachelor didn't follow his mama's pattern of getting married young and having kids right away. <laughs> so uh, he got married, I think, when he was about 36. And uh, he and Lauren, within the first year, well, got, got pregnant because she was like a year or so older than him. So they got pregnant right away after they got married, just about. And uh, had theirs, my, grand, my only grandson, Vaco, which Vaco is Finnish for the name Victor because my, my kid's dad's father was from Finland and his name was Victor or Vaco in Finland. So that's why they named him that. So anyway, Vaco is now, what did he just turn 15, 16? He was born in 2004. So he's 16. <sighs> anyway, he, he goes to school. Yeah, up in another, um, like in Connecticut or somewhere. Because like I say, they, they live in Brooklyn, but they have a house in Pennsylvania, in Bucks County. So they can go escape the city out there, which is where they spent most of the, the virus. <laughs> Stay at home out there. <laughs> and... Uh, it's about that on him. Let's see. Then my seventh son was born, 18 months. That was Alan. That's the one, the one that I got to see last night. He lives just about 45 minutes down the highway here. I don't see him very often um, because, you know, we're gone six months out of the year. And, of course, last year I saw him right before we left. And then when we came back in April, stay-at-home order was in full force, so we didn't get to see each other. And finally, we just said, hey, we better just at least get together, <laughs> see each other before I head back down south. So he and I got to dinner together for dinner last night, so that was nice seeing him, just me and him. Bob had a lot of stuff to do getting ready for you know, our excursion down south. So, and, and Alan's married, too. Uh, they have no children, but... Uh, we don't have a relationship with his wife anymore. Her choice. <laughs> Can you believe it? <laughs> and Alan was also a hockey player, mainly hockey. 
And he played until he was like around 21, something like that. He played in Sioux City, Iowa for several years after he graduated. And that's where he met his wife. And then they eventually moved out here to Washington. Um, let's see, what else about him? Oh, he's an Iron Man. He went through all that training to become an Iron Man, and he did it one year, and he succeeded and actually got it. So he's considered an Iron Man. <laughs> and he will be 50, 50 in March. They're getting older. <laughs> Then we have my only daughter, Michelle. And you all hear me talk about her all the time. Because she's the one I have the most contact with. I don't see my sons as much as I'd like to. You know, once your sons get married, like they say, you, you lose your sons. Because after all, they've got another woman that <laughs> can provide a lot more than mama can when they become men. So, yeah. their wives come first, like it should be. <laughs> so, uh... Let's see, Michelle I had when I was 27, so there's like six years between uh, Alan, my younger boy, and her. Just tried on purpose, just to try to have a girl. Thank God she was a girl. So, um, you know, Michelle is about what, what is she, 42, 43? <laughs> it's hard to keep track when they get older. And she, um, as a lot of you know, lives in Las Vegas, and she's the one that got me started on YouTube, and she's married and uh, no children, but she's got fur babies, so that'll work. <laughs> and uh, let's see, and, you know, she lives in Las Vegas. I'll put her link down below. I try to put that on a lot of my things so that if you want to check out her video, she's really good at it. And she's monetized though, so she's been working pretty hard. So she's, uh, Closer to me. She did live in Florida. Uh, uh, when her last husband was in the Navy and he got repositioned over to Norfolk, Virginia, so she had to move over there. And now she finally, she and Brad decided that they loved Vegas and they could still do their work out here, so they moved to Vegas. And now I can see her more often because she's, you know, when we're in Yuma, it's only like a five, five and a half hour drive to Vegas. And, uh, when we're home here, it's a cheap air flight. So, of course, this year we haven't seen each other as much <laughs> because of the virus. So, let's see. I can say I had my first one. I got married at right like a month or so past my 19th birthday. Two the kids, all three of my kids have the, the same dad, the sperm donor. And I finally divorced him in uh, after 21 years. And within a year, I met Bob. Wasn't planning on getting married again, but man, you know, when you meet, when I met this guy, it's like, okay, don't be stupid. <laughs> this guy actually loves you. <laughs> so uh, now Bob and I have been married 30 years. And Bob had two daughters from his previous marriage. He had a wife who didn't appreciate him. <laughs> and she's never remarried, so I bet she uh, would appreciate him now. Anyway, I wasn't in that marriage or involved in it at all, so I have no idea. <laughs> um, 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 I'd see. That's about all of my, all my kids. Oh, and Phil, my first one, they also had, uh, two years after Vaco, they had a granddaughter for me. Her name was Eden, and she's going to be 14 in December. And she's a real little doll, too. <laughs> so I'm glad I've got, you know, uh, one of each grandchild. And then Bob has one grandchild from his two daughters. That's all he'll have. So we've got three grandchildren between us, five kids between us. And um, that's about it on the kids. Um, I wonder what time's it getting to be. Still a lot of time left. What can I talk about that wouldn't shock you? <laughs> <laughs> um, 
I didn't go to college. I went to an all girls Catholic high school. I got married, the, you know, the February after I graduated. I was a, going to a junior college at that time, so I only got about a month in. And then I went back to junior college when uh, Alan was about three. So I had some college. Most of my training I got through work experience. So I did a lot of miscellaneous jobs when the kids were growing up, you know, all the secretarial type stuff. Or office assistant, as they call it now. And, uh, and then in uh, 83, my ex-husband and I started our own business. And I worked around my kids' schedules because with the hockey, it was every day. <laughs> yeah, so I, could, I was more like, you know, the office manager bookkeeper person. So I could do that in the evenings at home or, you know, just come in and, you know, to check up every day in the afternoon. Anyway, <laughs> of course, that went bye-bye when we divorced. <laughs> so I got to start all over again. And after I met Bob, you know, he worked for the federal government. I'm going to hold this here. <laughs> and at that time, the unemployment rate was very high. And so you know, I applied for all kinds of jobs, started doing temp jobs. And uh, when I applied for other permanent jobs, I said, oh, you're too overly qualified and blah, 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 you know. So finally, the, uh, the feds, this one agency, was uh, placing temporary help people, and they needed people over in the area we live in, because we live across the Puget Sound from Seattle. It was a ferry ride. So uh, I just started working as a temp for that agency. And from there, I just kept applying for permanent jobs over in the Seattle, over in the with the feds. <laughs> so I finally got in there, probably because of my husband's position, but take what you can get, right? And uh, I worked there for 13 years and in 2004 retired and went on disability. So that's where I've been ever since, was just on you know disability until I was uh, uh, qualified for regular social security. But that job, I tell you, you know, they send you to a lot of training classes if you need it, and, and I, uh, I took advantage of them. I don't mean of the government, I mean of the classes to help make me do my job better. I, I worked up really fast in, among the grades, if you're familiar with the grades at all. And what I did was I ran the temporary help program where I placed people, I hired and hired and fired supervised like 80 people that were placed all around the area and, and different government agencies so that they didn't have to have a permanent employee on their roles. Pay temporary employee and get better rates because ours were national contracts so we had better rates than we were supposed to. And, <laughs> and you know, if they needed somebody just temporarily, there was no way for them to get them very easily. And then, let's see, I also worked in the Employee Assistance Program, which is one that assists employees who are having problems, like it could be fi financial, psychological, um, divorce, need attorneys, just all those different kinds of things. And the idea behind that was to help people get help. And of course, their employer didn't know if they were getting, you know, they were getting help, so it was, all, it was a totally private thing. And uh, the premise was that if employees didn't have as much of their own problems on their mind, they'd be, uh, their work performance would improve. They had proven that, so I ran that program. <laughs> what else did I do? Oh, well, let's see, then we did a big move. I was a program manager for all of that. I managed contracts, like uh, an employee, and the employee assistance contract, and especially the temporary help contract, I managed that, which what they would call it, contracting officers' temper, uh, technical representative. So I represented that, the big contracting officer, and I did all the day-to-day -day contracting of it, helped award the contracts, you know, go through all the 
request for proposals that had come in, go through and figure out who was best uh, qualified and, and met you know, our needs for it. So I managed contracts. What else did I do? I suffered. <laughs> Had a very interesting boss. <laughs> we won't go into that, but she's kind of. <laughs> uh, so after I left, they closed the agency down a couple of years after that. So yeah, I left at a good time, and then Bob left. Bob retired two years after I did. We were both planning on retiring at fifty-five. Unfortunately, I didn't make it to that. So. He worked an extra year to help make up for that loss of income. So that was that. We almost time. I can't believe we passed the time. Uh, uh, let's see, we got married, Bob and I, when we were 40. And back then, you know, when I left the ex, you, know, you always heard, oh, women have a harder time. <laughs> <laughs> Finding man getting married again once you reach the age of 40. Oh, that's a bull. <laughs> so many gals aren't even getting married their first time until they're close to 40. So, you know, times have changed. I had no problems with dates, you know, having with boyfriends. I didn't want any boyfriends, but, you know, once I met Bob, now that went down the tubes, that idea. So, maybe someday I'll talk about how we met. Here comes Lucy again. Why don't you come up here, Lou? Why don't you come up here and say hi? He just looks at me with his mask. Aren't you getting used to this yet? Huh? Come on. She's coming under the coffee table. Come on, come up and see Mama. She seems to be feeling a little better since we've been... Come on. Oh, oh. She said something to me after, since we've been forcing that, those antibiotics down her throat. <laughs> Poor thing. I think she's got about 10 days to go with a 14 day thing. Um, so, let's see. Yeah, this is coming off. It's been just about 20 minutes. Oh, yes. <sighs> now pack in. I forgot to take a break to go get stuff to put on my face. So we won't bother you with that today. Ah, what you think? Just glowing. <laughs> so that'll do it for today. If you have any questions, feel free. If you like this, like. <laughs> if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. And uh, I'll see if I can get one posted next week. It depends on where we are with our, our journey down to Arizona. So <laughs> I love you all. Hope you have a good day and a good Halloween. Bye.